Hello everyone and welcome to BHD Studios. Today we will be looking at the brand new Leica M11. Where does it say that there? Right there, Leica M11. Now I was able to review this camera last year. I actually helped launch this camera. So thank you so much Leica USA for sending me a review copy a year ago at the launch, but that was a pre-production copy. This is a production copy of the M11. And I also have the M10R, which is what I wanted last year to kind of have it next to each other. Now these are different finishes, but there's a good reason why we can talk about finish a little bit later in the video. Video, but I had a chance to shoot with both of these. I had the M10R when I was in Germany. Thank you so much Camera West and Leica Star San Francisco for actually I have a long-term loan on this. I don't know how long to let me keep playing with this but I've had a great time so thank you so much Ben and the rest of the team for letting me shoot with this in Germany but as well as, as I got back to Canada this has kind of become my everyday on my day off having fun camera the M10R and here is a brand new M11 and I've been able to shoot with it back to back. I have another video where I'm out on the streets of Vancouver with Chris meets Chris and so that is gonna be a separate video. This is more of an up close kind of a look at these two cameras and talk about the advantages of buying the M11 over the M10R or there are specific reasons why people would want the M10R. So let's uh, put these cameras down here and we will uh, start the video. Well the video is technically already started but we'll get into the nitty gritty now. All right, so let's first talk about price. The M11 is $8,995, so just under $9,000 for the new M11. And the M10R, same price, $8,995, just under $9,000. So because they're the same price, people will wonder, well, why would you pick one over the other? Wouldn't you want the brand new one? And so we're gonna go over, you know, what is upgraded from this to this. Now I do have another video, I'll put the link down below where when this was first launched, I go through super detail of what was upgraded. But for those of you wondering, what's the M7? This is an old film camera, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but this is has been my, my primary Leica film camera for the past few years, and I've done lots of cool projects with it, including Hong Kong Neon, and so uh, this, uh, this just looks pretty, and of course, the M mount hasn't changed since 1954, since the M3. Lenses are all interchangeable, pretty much as the odd lens that might not work, but pretty much all these lenses are interchangeable. Viewfinder magnifications are very similar, I think 0 0.72, 0 0.3, 0.73, and so uh, we'll we'll doing a little test a little bit later of weight. So we'll be weighing these to see which is the heaviest, which is the lightest, why they're heavier, why they're lighter. But uh, these two here is really the question of like why would you pick this over this? The the first thing is the sensor in the M11, uh, and I actually think it's one of the least important features of the M11 over the M10R. The R stands for resolution. The M10 and the M10P have 24 megapixels which is more than enough for most people even for full frame and there's advantages of having 24 megapixels on a full frame sensor but those are wanted resolution the M10 monochrome and the M10R both share the the, the main sensor like the 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 basic architecture but the M 10 monochrome does not have a color filter array and so it can uh, has high resolution better high iso noise uh, better micro contrast this has a color filter array Bayer type but there is no uh, AE filter in there so you're still going to get sharp images this thing here has a, a, a three resolution sensor it has 60 36 and 18 and it does it through pixel binning so it is part hardware as well as part software. And so with that, you actually get 14-bit DNG raw files, 18, 36, and 60. And you can get both JPEG and raw, and you can mix and match that as well. And so that's kind of cool. My overall theory after shooting with this, uh, you know, a year ago and even now is, for me, I'm gonna just shoot at 60 megapixels. If I have 60, I'm going to shoot 60. Some, I would say, might shoot at 36 to get that one stop of extra performance in ISO as well as slightly better dynamic range. I think 15 versus 14. But for me, I would just shoot at 60 because I enjoy cropping to 16 by 9, a 21 by 9, 65 by 24. And when you crop, you know, you're losing all the extra re resolution. And so I like the 60, but 36 can also crop nice. 
40 can also crop nicely. And so to me, that's the, the, the big difference between these two. But more so than that, a couple of things that to me I think makes a big difference is this has the Maestro 3 image processor. And this has the older Maestro 2. So same processor in the SL2, SL2S, and the Q2. So this, uh, this camera, the, the processor is kind of overkill for this camera because this camera does not have autofocus. This camera does not have video. And this processor can handle video, it can handle autofocus, and this doesn't have either of them. But you can definitely feel the difference when you're shooting. I think this has a bigger buffer as well, so uh, it's much quicker to shoot. Even though like FPS is, I think, 4.5 FPS for both of the M10R and the M11. But really, the overall shooting experience is more fluid when you are using this M11 because of that Maestro 3 image processor. Um, both of them still have the single SD card slot, but I think this is a Type 2. So so it's also faster reading and also has built in 64 gigabyte and so um, no this does not have a dual card slot but it has a built in single card slot I'm hoping that uh, that 64 over time will get higher so it really will act like a dual card slot so maybe 256 maybe even 512 so if you have matching 512 it's as if you have two card slots so like a hopefully M12 we will get something like that as well this has electronic shutter so both of these I think have the same shutter which is a uh, one four thousandth of a second top shutter speed I think one one eightieth for flash sync yeah so one one eightieth for flash sync but this also goes up to one sixteen thousandth of a second electronic shutter and so uh, when you are shooting f1.4 you have a knock to shooting f f1 and it's bright daylight and you want to shoot it at the widest aperture instead of using ND filters you can just go into electronic shutter mode. You will get rolling shutter, of course, but you know, as long as what you're shooting is still or reasonably still, having that 1 16,000th of a second shutter is great. But more importantly, this actually has a native ISO. You can see it right here. See that? Native ISO of 64. And so that's not just a pulled ISO. Um, that is the, the true ISO, where this one here, the M10R, does have ISO 100, but the actual native ISO is 200, so I would recommend shoot this at 200, unless, again, you're shooting wide open and you want to just kind of slow that down instead of using an ND filter. So this is the pulled ISO 100. The M11 has a true ISO 64 and 1 16,000th of a second shutter speed uh, electronic. So shooting at f1.4 in bright daylight, 64 ISO as well as 1 16,000th, you're gonna have better opportunities without having to stop down. And I think that's the kind of the big difference. I remember shooting with the M10 going, oh man, 1 4,000th of a second. I wish it had electronic shutter, and now it does. But 1 16,000th of a second I found was, is more than enough for my needs. Another big change is there is a USB-C slot here. Now for a lot of people, they look at this going, why did Leica put this on the bottom? Well, because if you look at the build of this, I would say that it would actually affect the integrity of the build of the body. It is a magnesium alloy inner chassis with, uh, with this version here, it's an aluminum top, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but magnesium alloy, and to cut a hole through the side, I knew even before this came out that if they put a USB-C slot, it would have to go on the bottom. Now this is uh, a data throughput, so you can pull images off the card, but as well, you can use this to charge, either while you're using it, or when you get home and you wanna charge up the battery, you basically put it down like this, and then you plug it in this way here, and it starts to charge. And so I, I actually like where the USB-C plug here is. And this is weather sealed. The M10R is also weather sealed. And you might think, well, well, well that doesn't look weather sealed. Well, you know, your iPhone is weather sealed, but it has uh, it has a, an open lightning slot. So I trust that this is weather sealed. And this is, as you can now see, has that uh, unique battery system in line with the Q2 and the SL, which is, you know, it goes this, and then you pull it out like that, right? It has like a... You can sort of see that little kind of an S shape or a hook shape in here. So put it in. Battery does not come out until you push it up like that. 
And this is a 1800 milliamp hour battery versus 1100 milliamp hours. And the card slot, memory slot is over here, which is in the same spot as the M10R. So I, hopefully the Q2 has the memory card slot over here. Maybe in the M12, they will eventually be able to move it over here. We'll see. And if it's over here, maybe they can pull off a dual card slot. Who knows? But in this slot here, definitely cannot put a dual card slot. So it makes sense that they put that in internal. And so that's kind of a, you know, if you want to change your batteries quickly, there you go. You have this where the M10R, you do have to, there is a, a trick around doing this, but the M10R, like the film M, uh, this plate comes off first. This is just my name here. But anyways, you pull this off here and then you have access. Again, you know, it's the same spot as the M11. You got your memory card here and you have your, uh, your battery in here. So yes, I put my name on everything. So uh, yeah, so this has more of a classic look. It has the bottom plate. It looks more like the film version, but the M11 has this now this modern way of accessing a battery, memory card. Um, you can put like a small tripod plate and you can kind of still access it without having to remove that plate. But I find in general, you have to still remove this if this is on a tripod to access either the memory or the battery. And so that's why I'm saying, hopefully they may be able to move the, the memory off the side here, but probably never on the sides here or else it will uh, affect the integrity of the strength of the, the body here. Another thing is the M11, this is, uh, the rear dial is also push in. You hear that? So the way I have this set up here, here you go to live view, you can see here exposure compensation is immediately accessible here. And this is in the custom functions, but also if you press this in, it's also manual ISO. So I have do have this set to, oh, it's actually on, on A here. I think it's supposed to be on, I think it's supposed to be on M. There you go, so M for, for manual ISO. And now I can manually choose my ISO here. So actually press in. And there you go. So I have ma manual. So it's very quick to go change your ISO, press in. Now it's exposure compensation. So that's very fast and intuitive. I like this new update. And you also have that custom function button here. If you do a long press, you can set it to whatever you want. I currently have it set to DNG resolution. So if I just press this, it goes to medium, small, and then large. That is just a quick scroll. Like that, it would be nice if there was a resolution bracketing, so it actually shoots three photos. Because it's pixel binned, it can't just be one photo, but three photos in a row, large, medium, and small, and in exposure bracketing, right? Actually having resolution bracketing. But if you do a long press, as you can, as you can see, long press, and then you can change it. So you can, on the fly, change it from DNG to something else, and then go back, pick it, go back, so on the fly, it's very quick to be able to change that. So I love the way uh, this works. Where the M10R, the custom button is in the front here. You can't customize it to anything you want. Uh, I think it's either exposure comp or sort of magnification here. And so it's not as intuitive as having the button up here. And this here is not push in. I have this set to exposure compensation as well. Here, let's turn it on here. Yeah, so I have it set here, I press here. And you can see it's set to exposure compensation as well. But if I want to change ISO, I either lift this up here and just have quick access here. I wish maybe this was either like a click down and, it, and, it, and then it pops up on its own or if it just kind of, it's always accessible like that. But then maybe you might bump it by accident. So maybe having a little button on the top here. But uh, I do switch ISO quite a bit because I like to pretend it's a film camera. So I mean, this is just another way, or you can also go into A or M mode, but if you are in M mode, you have to access it through. So if you're in your custom shooting menu here in your home screen, uh, you can press the ISO like this and you can change it like that as another way, but you have to be in M mode up here. Now something you won't be able to see through here is upgraded LCD. This is a 2.3 million dots. So it's one of the highest LCDs I've seen on the market. The M10R has a just over a million dots. So uh, when you're punching in, it makes sense, 60 megapixels, you're punching in to take a look at the resolution. It helps to have this high resolution LCD. And so that's actually a pretty nice upgrade as well. And a revised home screen. So when you go into menus, does this look familiar guys? If you have a Q2 or an SL, SL2, you, you, you see this, this, your main home screen, and this is all, all touch interface. You can touch this and then change your various features by just using this touch 
What did I just press here? Oh, format. No, I don't want to format anything. To me, this is nice that the Q2, the SL2, and now the M, all of them have sort of, there's a continuity between all three of them, not only with the way the battery is removed, this is a different shape than the Q2 and the SL2, so it's a different battery, but still you remove it the same way, but as well, your the, the firmware is now aligned and it has a similar home screen, and then you press it again, and now you're in your, your main folders here. So that's great, I, I, I like that as well. And there's another big change but there is a trick of doing this when you are, so you could see that there is a shutter, which is really nice um, that like uh, when you turn it off, the shutter does protect any dust getting onto the sensor. But you have to remember that your shutter is more sensitive than your sensor. So your sensor is covered with a piece of glass and you can clean that sensor, but if you break that shutter, which is very thin, a lot of it's like aluminum or carbon fiber, it's very delicate. So as soon as you turn this on, See that? Now it exposes the sensor and the reason why that's significant is because the metering is off the sensor. So it's more accurate. And I did notice that the M10R, when it's either dark, it tends to underexpose. And when it's really bright, it tends to overexpose. It's central weighted metering. So it me meters very similar to this film camera. So if you're, shoot, you're used to the old way of metering, then you know you kind of compensate with this. And you can go to live view on the M10R. And I'll show you how to do that. But this is reading off of the sensor all the time. Even if you turn off here, even if you turn off the LCD, the sensor is still exposed. And so you're getting more accurate exposure readings. I think it doesn't matter what camera you have, you will get used to the metering style. And so um, I still got great exposures out of the M10R because I knew, hey, if it was dark, you make sure you bump it up a little bit. And if it's really bright, then you knock it down a little bit. And this one here is just more accurate. So it's just like a sports car. It just worked more fluid and quick, more quickly for me. Now the M10R, here we go. So when you turn it on, by default, it meters off of the shutter there. So that's the, the modern way of reading off the, uh, the shutter. So the meter is actually kind of up there and it kind of looks down and it, it is off the film plane, right? So it's looking at what light is hitting the shutter here. But the way to trick it is if you go, it's an LV button here. So you go to live, you go to live view, right? So now you're seeing real time. The only way you're seeing real time is obviously because the shutter is now open. And so if you do want more accurate exposure, you can just hit the live view button like this. And you know, if it's overexposed like this, you just like knock it down and like that looks good. And once you have your exposure set in here, it's basically going minus, minus one and a half stops because there's a lot of darkness here. So it kind of gets tricked. Then you can turn it off and then keep on shooting. So you can hear that, right? Hear the shutter opening like that. But as soon as you take the lens off, see that? The shutter closes in to again, to protect the sensor. But again, be very careful. Do not touch the shutter. The shutter is very, very sensitive. And here, I'll just show you on my film M. This is like cutting edge technology 2002. That's a cloth shutter there. And that little white dot, that's kind of the center weighted metering on the M7. And it's also, that's the TTL. And the metering is done off of the top here as it's looking down on the shutter. So now that we talked about the pros for the M11, we'll talk about the cons, or why would you pick the M10R over the M11? Before we do that, let's do something fun and let's weigh these cameras. And so here I have a scale here, Time more Black Mirror Basic in white. And so this is actually meant for coffees. So thank you Revolver Coffee for sending this out to me. Pretty darn fancy pants just to weigh cameras, but here we are, I have this scale right here. And what we're gonna do is make sure we take off all the accessories. So this is gonna be the M11 with no lens, but I leave the battery on here, all right? And no, no cap. So what is that? 533.7 battery in, 533, all right? For those of you wondering, these are coupe. They do make the official rope straps for Leica, but this color, this and this this one here, they're part of the orange series. So this is not, and doesn't say Leica on the side, but same build quality. And I actually, I think these look pretty cool. And also these brass shutter releases. This is a thinner one. 
And here's a thick one. These are from Retro Photo Reading, and I'll put the links down below for all these all these accessories. So this is the M10R uh, battery in, and but no lens, all right? And nothing else on here. So 533, 649. So uh, there's a huge weight difference, and we'll talk about why. And I think a lot of you guys already know what the difference is in weight, why there's a, such a weight difference. And here is a, a film M, all right? So again, I'm gonna take the strap off here. Since I left the batteries in on these two cameras, I'm gonna leave the film. There's actually film in here. And so I'm gonna leave the film in here because I mean, why weigh a film camera without film in it, right? It's always gonna have film in it. And this camera here is 642. So this camera is actually heavier. The M7 is heavier than the M11. So 642, 533, and 649 so it's really close uh, to the M7 these two here except for the fact that this has film in it But this also has a battery in it. So I don't know if you guys consider that fair is square But uh, anyways, that's that's it And so there is a reason why the M11 is Lighter and that's because the black finish and this is one of the if you want to call it a con that black finish on the M11 only comes with an aluminum top and there, I don't think this is a brass bottom. I think this is just either uh, aluminum or it's gonna be a magnesium alloy bottom here and it's not removable. And so one of the keys of, one of the features of Leica M's has been since 1954, most Leica M's, there was a period with the M4P, M42, and most M6s only used a, uh, most Leica M's used brass top and a brass bottom other than uh, like I said, a few of the M42, M4P, and the M6, they use like a sort of like a zinc alloy top. And so uh, that was kind of like a sort of a selling feature because you know, when the paint came off, you get brassing, right? Because there's brass underneath. Well, this black M11 is aluminum. And the advantage of aluminum, as you saw, is that it's 20% lighter than the brass version, the M11 in brass, not versus this one here. And so uh, there is a weight saving. So those that are like, Again, trying to shoot with more features. Well, having a lighter camera is pretty sweet and you can really feel the difference when you're shooting with the M11 that it is a lighter camera. Now the M, uh, M10R has a brass top, like the M11 silver will have the brass top, but like the M11 black, it does not use this brass bottom plate here. Right, so again, the bottom plate and the top plate will brass, or if you wanna make your own Lenny Kravitz version, you can put sandpaper to it, or you know, you can send it to a place like Kanto, and they will, um, you know, you can have it refinish and have the brass showing, but the M11 black won't do it, and the M11 silver, the top will brass, the bottom plate won't, because there's no longer a bottom plate. And so that's one reason why you might choose the M10R, is that if you want a black M11, but you want it in brass, it doesn't exist at this time. So you're gonna have to go the M10R if you want the brass top and the bottom. And if you are a real traditionalist, you have a film M and you want it to have, similar to the, your film N, you want it to have a brass top and bottom, well this may be the last Leica M digital that will have a brass top and bottom plate. So if you're of traditionalist, I always tell people, look, you're not choosing a Leica M because it is the, the most feature rich and the fastest shooting camera. I mean, if that's what you're looking for, go get a Sony a7, right? You're shooting a Leica M because of, it, it is a slower shooting experience. It's like driving an air-cooled Porsche with a stick shift. Right, It's not the fastest car in the world, but you're driving it because of the experience, the pleasure you get in interacting with the camera, changing the dials, you're manually focusing because you just, it's, there's a pure pleasure of it. So um, that's where I think uh, the advantage of shooting with an M10R over the M11 is yes, technically this is a better, faster, more powerful camera than the M10R, but this is more traditional, not only with the brass top and bottom, but having that bottom Plate. And if you are shooting for the pure pleasure of it and you like the fact that this is this is built more like a film M, then that's probably the main reason why you would buy an M10R over an M11. But the question is at the same price, and that's where Camera West and Leica Store San Francisco Company play because 
because the price is the same. Now I talked to Leica and I asked them, you know, why are you selling the M10R at the same price as the M11 since you know there's such a, a spec bump on the M11 over the M10R? And again, I'm not talking about just the resolution of the sensor. And Leica says we don't do that until they run out of stock of the M10R. They're gonna they're gonna maintain the the price. And that actually, from a buyer's standpoint, it might not make sense. Thinking like, oh well, then if I'm gonna if it's these two are the same price, then I'm gonna get an M11. Well then go for it. For those of you who bought an M10R, it keeps the value up. So really from a customer standpoint, it's good that Leica did not drop this by $2,000. And anyone who buys anything that's luxury, Rolex, they don't discount their watches, or at least not anymore. By keeping the price up high, where you know it, 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 the, the cost of producing this hasn't changed just because this came out. But if you wanna buy a used M10R, because it's very hard to find a used M11, well then that's where the deal is. So if you go to Camera West or Leica Store San Francisco, you look at the pre, pre-owned pre section and you can find Leica M10Rs and M10Ps and M10. So there's three versions of this as well as the monochrome, but that's quite expensive. You can find a lot of these because people who did buy an M10R do want the extra features of the M11. And so they're trading it in. So right now the M10R, when I first borrowed this, I think they had five or six M10Rs used and now there's only one left. And so maybe this is the one that's on their website, who knows? So if you want to get into a digital M and you want a high resolution digital M, so remember 40 megapixels is still quite a bit for a full frame like an M body, get an M10R. Now the prices will vary based on the condition as well as what you get with it. But you know, again, prices will fluctuate based on the condition. And so you're saving $3,000 buying this one new or like $3,000 from this one. So, you know, $3,000 is another lens. And so I think there's great value in the M10R as well as accessories. Here is, here, let's just, um, let's uh, put, let's put a lens, let's put the lenses back here since we measured these and uh, let's just move the scale out of the way. So again, th thank you Revolver Coffee for letting me have this for my YouTube video here. Accessories. Now, batteries for both the M11 and the M10R and the M10 and M10P, uh, they're $200. They're very expensive batteries, but because there's this camera's been around for so many years, you could buy these batteries cheaper used or lots of third-party options, but as well as accessories. So remember I was telling you about how, you know, if you have a bottom plate here and this is on a tripod, you have to always take this off uh, to either change a battery or remove your, or take out the memory card. Well, there's a brand called Camera Craft with the K that, See how it replaces the bottom plate here? It goes on here. And he has a silver version as well as the black version. And this is a metallic grip here. It also has a wood grip. Just go to his website. I'll put the link down below. Now look how awesome this looks. Now obviously it makes this camera heavier. It's already heavier than the M11. But a couple of things. It has this uh, Arca Swiss type connector. So you can attach this directly onto a tripod, which I like as well you have quick access to your battery and your memory card. So no need to take the bottom plate out. Look at that. So that's the advantage of having something like this. I also have the same uh, camera craft grip on for my M7. I don't have it on right now, but same thing. Once you put it on, uh, you can just immediately put it on a tripod. You don't have to worry about plates or anything. You get that extra grip here. And so uh, I asked camera craft, are they gonna be making one for the M11? It's not that it's not possible, but you can see how thin that space is. And Leica does have a, a grip and a bottom plate for the M11, but this is rubber. It kind of, I think, because it's so thin here, they have to kind of bulk up the sides here. So I think accessories, third party accessories, you're gonna have way more options on the M10 series, M10, M10P, M10R, like this, as well as access to cheaper batteries and cheaper accessories, cheaper chargers, because this has been around for a long time. And finally, you have access to you. So I don't think there's a lot of M11s showing up on the used market, because this is basically a year old. And so, and as, I'm sure as soon as these show up used, they get bought up right away. But you go to Camera West or you go to Leica Store San Francisco and you'll see a handful of these on sale and you save thousands of dollars on buying new. So go check out Camera West. Again, thank you so much Camera West for sending this out to me a long-term loan and having fun shooting with it. So, you know, having the M11, you know, which one would I choose? For sure, if you're buying brand new and you wanna buy a brand new Leica M, it makes more sense to go with the M11 because of the processor, because of the screen, 
screen, because of all the, the updated firmware, because of the metering. There's lots of reasons why, but functionally the way you shoot with a Leica M11 it's gonna be pretty much the same as the M10, which is pretty much gonna be the same as shooting with a film like a M series. And so the shooting experience is exactly the same for me. Um, I'm not buying these cameras because they're the fastest or, you know, these aren't devices, these aren't microwaves. You want a microwave for a camera, you know, again, you go buy a Sony, right? It'll do everything for you. You're buying these cameras for their optics, for the build quality, these are all built in Germany. And as well as, uh, you know, the, it's a slower way of shooting, but you know, the camera doesn't take the photo, you're taking the photo, right? And the camera does what you tell it to do, it's more of a tool. And so both these cameras, I have fun shooting with it. If I was gonna buy one, I would probably go use and obviously, if I'm gonna save $3,000 on buying used, you could probably get this kit. Like this is the 35 Simicron. And so if you're buying this used, you could probably buy a 35 Simicron, a M10R, a grip, a couple of spare batteries, and you probably at about the same price as a brand new M11. M10R, M11, both great cameras. There really isn't a winner or loser. This is just the latest, greatest version, which means from a technical standpoint, it's going to be better than the M10R, but this is no slouch. 40 megapixel, I love, actually, I really love the sensor. It is, as I mentioned, based on the same sensor that's in the M10 monochrome, except for the color filter array. So nice dynamic range, great resolution, especially if you crop, and just a pleasure to shoot with. If you want more accurate metering, you can open it up, go live view, and you get more accurate metering, but love the colors coming off of the sensor as well. And uh, the M11 is just, just a just a modern version of it. If I were gonna choose between the black or the silver, I like the fact that they're using brass. Uh, using brass, I would probably get the silver version, but the black is also stealth. I know a lot of people like the stealthy look of the black Leica. And now if you want the black Leica M11, but you want the brass top, it's not like Leica won't do it. There may be a M11P or something or some limited edition that uses black paint and might give you the brass top. It's not impossible for them to do it, but it's not available right now and it's gonna be more expensive than, than the $9,000 for this one here. And so I still say M10R used Camera West Leica Store San Francisco. And so that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Check out my video, I'll be posting it soon where I'm out in the streets shooting with the M10R, M11, as well as the M7 on the streets of Vancouver with Chris Meets Chris. And besides that, just ask me any questions down below. And that's it. We'll talk to you soon. Happy shooting.